All right, folks, uh, doing part three of our uh, wide open throttle SD tuning. Uh, this is the log we looked at last time, I believe, uh, where we're doing the adjustments, trying to figure out what our injector size needed to be uh, and the ECM link settings in our fuel tab. Of course, uh, this is where it was running a little bit lean. Uh, as, as far as the mixture is concerned, I believe this is the last one we were looking at. And uh, we did the calculations trying to figure out where the injectors needed to be so that our Y-band line up here would come down and about match up as closely as possible to our uh, air-fuel ratio estimate down here. And basically, we're just trying to add fuel to the mixture on the top end to try and get it uh, to line up. Also, too, of course, we're needing to do a TPS adjustment um, to get our throttle position where it should be because, of course, we're only at about, what, 91% right up in here. Um, of course, we may have had some other, uh, some more throttle. Maybe he wasn't pushing it all the way down. Uh, however, we did the adjustment and have that all squared away. And now this is where we're at. Um, so basically, you can see he is at 100% throttle now where he should have been. And you can see by doing our calculation, this has dropped his wide band uh, down about where it should be, lining it up. And now basically, all we're really having to do is smooth it out. Uh, one thing I do want to notice, or I mean, uh, not notice, but point out that I did notice is this is a picture of his log that he sent me before and that's kind of a reason why it's taken me so long to get this video done uh, was because if you see his wideband here was spiking up and down real bad and uh, first things first I know that he should have um, by the log he would have sent me um, by the adjustments I had done this line should have come down to about right here where they were uh, where they'd be lining up and is not doing that in this particular log and also too he had a bad spike as far as the wideband going up and down this right here is basically telling me that okay there's a connection issue um, shouldn't have a spiky line like this where it's going up and down uh, basically telling me either there's a ground issue or the uh, the wire where he had connected it to the ECU was not having a good connection so uh, basically he cleared that up and uh, of course also too uh, I had him also verify his uh, his wideband gauge and uh, by his wideband gauge everything was where it should have been but of course we're looking here at a wide open well close to wide open throttle pull in this one uh, not quite wide open but close enough and he was running about 15.6 for his wideband uh, way off from what his gauge was reading so uh, I had him look at his wiring basically come to find out I guess he had a uh, ground wire that was not correct and uh, or, or not tightened down all the way he corrected that issue and that resolved the issue so now we have a good pull here um, it's, it's about where it needs to be pretty close uh, to where it, where we're wanting it in this particular part he's uh, their fuel ratio estimate and it's about 12.7 and uh, the wide band showing 12.3 uh, so it's a little bit on the richer side and actually in this part of the pool we could actually remove a little bit of fuel but basically we're just wanting to smooth it out at this point we don't want to have to add a whole bunch to our uh, speed density table so but basically what we're going to do we're just going to click on track data log to see where we're at in the particular log which is right here at this point i'm going to detach the table keep it always on top and then we'll go ahead and uh, shrink it on down a little bit so it has some room to deal with i'm going to go back to our log and this is normally what I'm doing. I'm just dropping over here off to the corner, uh, upper right-hand corner here. And normally what I'm doing personally, of course, everyone may do it differently, but that's just myself personally. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit just by hitting the uh, down arrow key so I have a little bit of room to work with. And, of course, you can see where his boost is starting to climb. And we only had him do it about, uh, I told him about 4,500 RPM, so he was getting... Uh, just over that but it's right about where he should have been and of course this is about where his boost was climbing is about 27.5 uh, pounds of boost in this particular log uh, let's see maybe got a little bit higher 28.7 so we're, we're getting pretty on the high end hopefully he's gonna be level leveling it off but we're at the top of the log here we're gonna look at our speed density table here we're gonna drag it over so we can see what cells are being used of course these right here so basically he's pretty close right about where he should be right in here i'm going to leave that alone we're just going to scroll through we're going to just use our arrow key and scroll scroll through here to the left until it starts giving us to a point where we really need to start making adjustments and of course basically all i'm doing i'm taking wideband factor here 1.5 well i just add 1.5 to that so uh, basically every if i hold my control uh, or the ctrl button down 
and then hit my arrow key up, every every hit of the arrow key up is going to be basically one half. So if I 1.5, that's basically three hits. So so 9 point or 97.5. Of course, and then uh, we're just going to keep on doing that all the way across, and we're just wanting to smooth that out a little bit until it's going to the next one. Of course, uh, now these may not always be accurate because for one pull might be a little bit different than the next. You may not always hit the same cells. and may use a different one, but basically what we're going to be doing, we're just hitting different sections. We'll just go to this section right here because it's not quite as of a huge adjustment here. Um, let's see, so we've got about, what, point three there but the lines are pretty lining up pretty close to each other right there um, so we're basically going to be removing fuel from these points over here so let's see about what two and a half right here so by 81.5 and we're just going to keep scrolling across to the left until it's highlighting each cell that we're using so 83 so that's going to be put us right down about 80 and this is all I'm doing all the way through the log. And then we're just basically smoothing everything out after I'm done. So let's see, that's one, two, three, four and a half. And keep on going until we get to the next cell. And this is normally what I'm doing. And so now, of course, now if you see, if you notice what I'm doing here, at this particular point in the log, it's highlighting four cells. Well, I've already made my adjustment to this cell, so I really don't have to mess with that one. I'm only going to be doing the other two, so I'm hitting my shift key down, uh, the arrow up to highlight those two. Then I release the shift button, I'm going to hit my CTRL button, and go down three and a half, one, two, three and a half. And then go to the last one that we didn't adjust and make the same about the same adjustment there. One, two, three and a half. So that'll get us right about where we should be. And then basically we're doing this to the whole pull. Of course, I'll come back and clean this up a little bit later. I don't want to spend the whole video with everyone watching me make every single adjustment that needs to be made. But you get the idea. Then we'll basically detach the table. If anything needs to be smoothed out, because obviously, let's say, for example, uh, we're 97.5 here where we may be uh, adding a little bit of fuel there. Uh, of course, we want the surrounding tables to be right around that that same amount and uh, maybe just raising these just a little bit so it has a nice smooth transition that's not dropping from or jumping up from, let's say, 84 to 95 all of a sudden. We want to have a nice smooth transition. So uh, some of these sometimes, I mean, you may see a little block in there where it might not look a little bit smooth so i'm just coming in and smoothing things out a little bit just to make it look a little bit nicer here so that if it does happen to use those cells it is also uh going to be a nice smoother transition than what we're looking at so uh let's see and of course for those of you that don't know there are different ways we can make these adjustments here you can either let's say you can click on that particular cell you can hit the control button hold it down and the arrows up up or down course you'll be able to know if you actually made adjustment because it's going to be in bold letters like over here if it's not bold that's basically the stock settings we have now what we can do let's say I'm going to copy this table okay because I don't want to lose the settings I've done now let's say we screwed up we want to start all the way over we just come over here and click reset and that just puts everything back just like it was before I made any adjustments so I'm going to right click paste it put my numbers back in there that way I didn't lose it okay so we have that in there but for those of you that don't know the different ways to make the adjustments you can either hit the ctrl button up or down or you can double click on it you can uh, basically we're going to backspace it and we can uh, put in whatever number we want bam 95 or we can uh, select the cells we can select multiple cells at a time as well right click set values to so if we want all those cells at a certain particular spot we can type in whatever number i'm not going to do that right now though because i don't want to have to deal with each one having to be back to the stock values and i'm just trying to do this just for a purpose of showing you what we're doing now another thing i want to point out is that i have had uh, happen here soon i should have had the log pulled up uh, but a guy renee uh, had his pull i was doing his on the dyno and the problem he was having when he was getting down to uh, wide open throttle, right about this area here, right as he's hitting boost, his wideband is going straight up. 
So of course, what do I do? I'm adding fuel. Yes, I'm adding fuel. Still goes and does another pull. It's going straight up. His injector duty cycle over here is climbing. It's going skyrocket through the roof. Can't get it to come down. That might be a sign if you're adding fuel and you're not getting any richer. That might be a sign that either your injectors aren't putting out enough or you've got a pump that's going to be too small. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you're having that issue, you're going to want to be looking at your injector duty cycles. Uh, really shouldn't be much over 80%. Uh, I think his was close to about 100 or maybe a little bit higher. So uh, had to back that off and uh, go a little bit less on the boost. So uh, he's not trying to pump so much fuel, but uh, just a little tip for you there. Um, let's see, what else can we go over here? Um, now, another thing, of course, if you're trying to um, – punch the throttle and you have a little bit of lag time there uh, one thing you may be wanting to, monitor, wanting to monitor is TPS Delta here now of course you can see my line here is a little bitty line let me clear out some of this okay so basically you can see my spikes here and let's say we come over here you'll see the numbers change to one and we'll scroll over a little bit and I've got I've got a four I've got different little spikes over here as far as what's showing up get my numbers back over here but that basically tells us where we really need to be making our adjustments to and what you may want to do well, of course i'll pull it up here in just a moment i'm going to close this back out but just remember this is where we were before we started making our calculations for the injectors and this is about where we ended up and this is what you want to, this is the reason why you want to do those calculations with the injectors now of course you can um, while i'm thinking about it let me discuss it real quick you can raise these numbers up. Let's say if a wideband factor says, says uh, let's say 12%, okay? Of course, we're basically we're pretending we're working with this log right now. Okay, well, we'll just go with this one uh, that we're on. It says 36.3% on this particular log. We'll just open up this one real quick. Speed density, this is what we're starting to work with. This is before the adjustments were made here to smooth that out track data log in that particular spot uh, we're 80 right here so we're going to move it on down to here so 39.6 percent so if we added 39.6 percent that's about right at 40 that's gonna be about 140 we can't even get that high so uh, now you could raise these up let's say if it's down at about 100 but of course you need more adjustment you can't you can't get it any higher than that that's the reason why you want to do the adjustments with the the uh, fuel injectors so you can add more fuel and then you can bring this back down and get it right around 100 then you can adjust it some more it's not going to really hurt if you're going much over 100 but you're going to want to have a nice smooth transition and uh, you have room to make adjustments for fuel if you need to just keeping in mind that if you have to drop this back down um, the thing you have to keep in mind is that if you're dropping this table back down, you're going to want to keep your idle area around the same. Because if you go, uh, let's say if you did the whole table, let me close this box out here real quick. Uh, but anyway, if we, let's say we drop the whole table back down because you've got, let's say, 120 or whatever on the table here and you want to drop it back down to 100, well then... Uh, you don't want to mess with your idle area because then that's going to be throwing off your fuel trims. You're just going to want to drop it back down to the stock table that you had it. Normally, I, that's one of the reason why I keep it a stock table. I don't raise these numbers up a lot. And uh, one thing I did have uh, happen here recently, uh, one gentleman, I forget who it, right, who it is right offhand, he was making the adjustment that I'd done from the previous video before. He had a wideband factor of 12. Okay, he went let's see and added it I want to say from about 80 or 90 something uh, I forget what it was but he ended up with 105 okay well let me show you real quick let's see now normally when I'm doing these adjustments I'm doing I'm going from the very top from 100 every time minus or I'm sorry not minus divided say 39.6 so we're adding that 39.6 to the 100 so we have 139.6 okay so that and then we're adding uh, or we're multiplying whatever that number is to our injector size okay um, that's how I come up with my injector size now I want to go off 100 if you go off of any other number that may throw off your 
global settings as far as your fuel. Keep it at 100. Don't be going off of wideband factor says 39.6, adding that to an 80, uh, and then do, let's say, uh, 80 plus 39.6. You know, that we're not we're not going off that number. So whatever the number is here in wideband factor, add that to 100 and then divide 100 by whatever that number is, okay? So just to square that away, hope, hopefully everyone is understanding what I'm saying. Is. But uh, anyway, back to what we were discussing just a moment ago with the TPS Delta. Um, basically, we we're logging this uh, because let's say if you're punching the throttle and you get a hesitation there, that's when you're going to be coming to direct access and you're going to do the base tip in TPS adjust. And basically, you're looking at these numbers here, the one, two, three, four, five, all, and so on. Those, those particular sliders, you may have to move those uh, particular sliders up a little bit to try and basically give an extra, or a, a extra bit of a squirt of fuel to try and get rid of that hesitation. So um, just so that you're aware of that. Um, but aside from that, uh, that's basically covering what I'm doing for the wide open throttle for the speed density. Uh, I'll cover just a little bit more. I'll probably back up a little bit and go over idle, which I believe some guys are wanting. Uh, just stay tuned. I'll try and make some more videos. Hope you guys are learning. Have any questions, keep shooting me the questions. And, of course, I'll be more than happy to try and help you guys out. Hope everybody's understanding. And uh, that's it. Just stay tuned. All right. Bye-bye.